Besides using Infant Unify to simply even out skin tones, sometimes people wonder about some of the settings, particularly what's the difference between hue and saturation and color when it comes to selecting the option over here at the bottom in the blending mode section. Well, I'm going to go over that today. And first, before we actually begin using that in a workflow, I do want to mention that before doing any unifying at all, you want to make sure here in your um, dodge and burn section of your workflow, you want to make sure that when you look at an image like this, before unifying anything, you have to be sure that the luminosity of the skin itself is relatively similar to what you're trying to match up. For example, in this image, you'll notice that the face, if I turn my burn layer off for a second, the face is actually uh, much darker than the hands. And because of that, no matter how much color you try to even out, because the hand is brighter, it's always going to be a different look in comparison to what it should be. So first and foremost, make sure the hand matches the face. The way we're going to do that is dodge and burn. And whatever the way that you do it in is different to me, obviously, but I always recommend doing curves, which is really handy because I have two curves here with a black mask. And I'm going to go ahead and click on my mask here. I'm going to continue that, which I've already done a preliminary round of. However, I'm going to continue going a little bit further by using a regular brush tool set to white. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, darken some of these other parts just a little bit more so that we get a very, very precise uh, result. The reason I actually have this set to black and white is because color is very distracting when you're trying to see luminosity. It's very, very difficult. And I have a, a basically a solid color adjustment layer on top set to the color blend mode and it's set to black. And that's all it really is. And it gets me a really nice black and white view. You can also use a black and white adjustment layer, but I think this is a very uh, accurate representation of luminosity. So I think that should be pretty good. It looks looks good. I can also take my dodge and uh, going to brighten up the face just a little bit too, like this. And uh, Jesse Jamerson here actually supplied this photograph for us to use as an example, which I think is is really cool because this photograph here is a good representation of, of the different blend modes we're going to use to even out the hand. I might have gone just a little bit too far with the burn on the hand, so I'm going to use a black brush and kind of bring that back in. And there you go, that looks a lot better. Let's take a look at the before and after here. The before and after. You can see it's much more uniform, right? Now we can actually adjust the colors and it'll make much more sense. And I'm going to turn this off after we're done so you can see the difference. So I've turned the actual uh, black and white conversion off here for a second and close my dodge and burn because now we're going to even out the actual skin tone. So I think the order of operation is that we are going to use hue first and then saturation um, as a way to kind of balance this out. The reason I decided to use this image for this process is because here we have a couple of joint issues going on. Number one, we obviously have red across the hands. But we also have different saturation levels. We also have, for example, like the hands here are very desaturated on the knuckles. And the part of the the skin that's meeting the sleeve is also a bit desaturated. And the parts that are saturated are also notable by the um, areas here, the creases. So we have a very complex situation that most people might not know how to deal with. So the difference between hue and saturation and color, generally speaking, can be shown actually really simply. I'm going to use a blank layer real quick. Change that to hue. OK, let's use not saturation, hue. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick, say, well, let's just pick a general tone like this on the nose. It's pretty neutral, right? It's not very saturated. I'll use 100% flow. I'm just simply just going to brush across the skin. And you can see here it does a pretty decent job. But there's one thing to note about this, is that whenever you do that, it doesn't change the saturation of, say, like the areas here that are desaturated or maybe the creases that are very saturated, you still see a very saturated version of whatever color we selected. And again, if I take that same color and brush it across, like say the nails, you can see the nails are still very saturated. It's still the same color that we picked. I'm just brushing with the same tone. So what happens is the same saturation level stays. The only thing that shifts is whatever cue that we pick. 
and that's what hue kind of is it's uh it's it takes away um the saturation basically where it it keeps the saturation of whatever you're painting on and this is this can be really handy especially if you're trying to keep like realism um across the skin like this but you know obviously there's different levels of saturation going on and we want it a little bit closer so that's what hue is now if we let's say take that off add another blank layer and change it to say saturation what happens now is actually the opposite where if we select that same tone here and that tone that you look at is actually not very saturated it's kind of in the middle and what's going to happen now is it'll still stay red or whatever color is underneath but what happens is it's going to match the saturation of whatever we pick so you can see now that the entire area becomes the same level of saturation but it still stays those red and yellow colors so it's kind of interesting because if i pick say white which has almost no saturation it's going to desaturate everything as you can see here it's it's desaturating it and vice versa if i pick a really saturated color like blue it's going to take the saturation property of that blue and kind of oversaturate things as well um, the same thing happens if you manually picked a color that was like super saturated like this and i brushed over you can see it just becomes really saturated no matter what color i pick it's still going to be that same level of very saturated color it's going to saturate everything but it's going to keep the underlying color to whatever it is that uh, that you're brushing over so again that's kind of the difference now how do we use that when it comes to unify well simply put i normally like to start with hue uh, many times um, there's also the color blend mode as well which is a combination of both so if i had another blank layer and set that to color and if i pick say the skin here it's going to do both even out the color and saturation together so you don't have independent control of hue and saturation so what happens is that let's say that you know you actually quite like the saturation but you you know want to tone down how similar everything is in terms of that beige tone well simply reducing the opacity might do pretty well but too much red is showing through so i kind of want you know to keep one part but not the other and that is where having hue and saturation separately is very very handy so for instance i can start with hue start with h hue and i'm going to say make a, a selection here with my lasso tool and i'll just you know um let me just do a little selection here on the nose i'll keep everything else the same and if you are not familiar with any of these other tools and settings simply go to infinite-tools.com in infinite unify and then you can see exactly how to use it because there's a video going over every single function in detail so i have hue set i have uh, my mask option clicked on which is going to add a black mask and nothing else selected then i'm just going to hit create don't worry about these other settings for now and it creates a gradient map with a, a black mask set to hue this opacity might vary based on what your um, default is for me i set it to like 47 which you can do here once you have your opacity there you can click on this and say set as standard and it keeps the same opacity no matter how many times you add a gradient map so that part's done um, i'm going to keep my hue to say like maybe 60 percent or so just because i want some natural variations showing through uh, my opacity and flow is at 100 again same thing as usual i'm just going to brush over everything and you can see it's looking pretty good i like this a lot it's just like we saw in the beginning I think this is really really interesting and it fixes it for the most part so that part is done and i'm going to do this other hand really quickly like this now once that is done you can see that the tone's a lot better it's actually looking pretty good the only difference now is that there's some saturation differences as i mentioned before where the saturation gaps here on the fingers but too saturated here on the on the creases and i just want to even that out a little bit more now this is where i could actually use the saturation as a blend mode to fill in the gaps and instead of doing the create button again and doing the mask again all i simply need to do is duplicate this layer here change it to saturation and then i can tweak the opacity to to match 
the exact level of saturation that I want. I'm going to bring this up and I don't want to go to 100 because that does not look right at all. Um, and I'm going to say maybe go to 46 or so. There we go. I think that looks really good. And I think now the hand and the face and the skin matches a lot better. So you can obviously tweak these to adjust based on whatever you're looking for. So if you have a very complex example, you can do hue and saturation and play with both of the values to get kind of what you're going for. But understanding these differences, I think, is very, very important. Don't forget, we have this dodge and burn here. You can see when I turn this off and on, how much more uniform it becomes because A, as I mentioned, luminosity plays a huge role in making sure that things look even. Because sometimes people go, why doesn't my you know, skin on the face look close to the hand? Well, you have to remember that you have to also consider luminosity. And if it doesn't match up, then that can be a problem. So now we can go back and, and tweak whatever looks most realistic to us. And I think I'm just going to keep it to where it was. And I think we are good to go. Anyways, I hope you found this useful and you understood the differences between hue and saturation. And again, I think the best way to understand this is simply just to play around with both and seeing what happens.